Hey everybody, welcome back to Handy Andy YouTube channel. Um, today we're going to be installing a CB radio in my car back there. It's a Subaru Outback, as you probably know by now. Uh, the unit we're going to be installing is a Midland 75822. Um, you can see it is a uh, has a car lighter adapter, plugs in there. Also has a detachable battery pack. Um, so you can use a, as a, an antenna, you can use it as a handheld thing. It's got a built-in weather radio. In fact, it comes with two battery packs, one for regular batteries and one for rechargeable batteries. Um, and so we'll install that in there. I've got a fire stick fiberglass antenna with a tunable tip. It's a three foot variety. Standard 18 feet of, uh, of coax cable there. And then a bracket uh, that's also a fire stick branded bracket um, for doors, hoods, uh, lift gates. I haven't decided where I'm going to put it, so I'll decide that before we film it, obviously. Um, so before we get started, let's take a quick break. I'm going to do an unboxing video of when this arrived the other day. I already, I've already kind of played with it a little bit to take a look. Um, but I'm going to let you see that, and then we come back after the jump for the actual install. Enjoy. Okay, so this is the CB radio that I decided on. Middle-end portable CB radio. Two-in-one, plug-and-play. This is the... 75822 model uh, and you can see on the back cover here this is the real basics of it right you can use it plugged in to your computer it's got a or to your car it's got a, uh, a cigarette lighter adapter there's the antenna um, also this bottom part I think slides off you can attach a battery pack and there should be two in here um, and attach an antenna giving you the capacity or the ability to use it as a handheld so Let's take a look and see what is inside. Um, you know, really great packaging, honestly. Like, this picture makes me happy. It shows all the scenes in which you might need it. Uh, key feature here, it's got a built-in NOAA weather radio, which is a big deal here in Oklahoma. So look, uh, looks like all your documentation here, including some very fancy stickers right everyone loves a good sticker in yellow black and translucent or not translucent but like reflective my daughter will love that all right um so like a little ad with all their products that's actually pretty awesome uh owner's manual standard stuff okay so let's look in here let's go for the big dog first Everything is individually wrapped, which I guess is nice, unless you like the environment. Um, so here's the device. You can see the plug for the antenna right there. Um, it's got an external, it's got a oh, nice rubber thing, external mic and speaker. In case you want to hook it up to that, I think you can use like a headset as well. On and off, squelch, um, backlight. All the buttons everything seems to be like really well sealed too like oh it's got a good can you hear that it's a good good feel to the buttons there they are big enough without being too big you know that's you want to see how it fits in your hand channel up down that's pretty good and then this right there it's a little slider which is honestly stays out of the way so you're not gonna like accidentally do it with your finger. But it slides off pretty easily. So this one um, is the case, I think. We'll, we'll see. I think that's the case for the AA batteries. So here we've got a bigger case. I think this is this is for rechargeable batteries. They feel hollow. They're real light. And so this is the hollow one. AC adapter for charging this. I think. Yeah. So there's the charger. Here's the antenna. We can 
put that on and So it's a pretty long antenna. I mean, it doubles the length of the device. This one, I didn't test it, but just to show it, here's how you put it on so you can fit. So bigger battery pack. That's good. And then here's the um, combined. Oh, no, no. I don't need scissors. Hats off to Midland for making packaging that doesn't require scissors to open any of it. Or a knife. Um, although that might make this step a little easier. Here we go. Voila. So this slides on like that. And so you would have that off. So that's your unit there in your vehicle. Um, Heavier than I expected, but not terrible. I mean, heavier than like your than uh, a device that doesn't have everything integrated, right? Like if you only had the mic in your hand or speaker, it would obviously be a lot lighter. But this is heavy enough that you're not gonna drop it necessarily. So you know, one thing that I did not think about when I ordered this is how I'm gonna mount this in the car and. You know, this is more of like a belt clip style and not like the kind of hanger that you would normally think of um, for a CB mic in the car. So that's going to be interesting. Nice little wrist strap. Um, it looks like I could feasibly replace it with another option if I wanted to. Um, so I may look into that online. There's nothing in the box. So, huh. Okay. Um, anyway, so this plugs in. There's your antenna adapter that'll screw into my Fire Stick antenna that I ordered. And then there's a cigarette lighter adapter. So I'm gonna run these. Um, I've got a cigarette lighter, you know, I've got two, one in the dash and one in my console, and then, then the antenna line. So I need to scope it out and see where I'm gonna run it. And with that, let's go to the install. Okay, so Hope you enjoyed that. Now, the first thing I've got to decide is where I'm going to attach this. Uh, and I've got a couple of considerations. One is that I've got this roof rack and I could attach to that, but I don't want to because I don't always have the roof rack up there. And you'll see in my garage right here, I have a eye camper rooftop tent um, that I'd like to use as well. And I, so I need to put the antenna somewhere where it doesn't hit the camper, right? So I've got a couple of ideas. So one is, to put it right here and I'll, you know, this thing pivots and I can bend it down um, and then have it stick straight up in the back here. Um, so it would look whoop, like that. The other option, of course, is putting it on the hood. Um, I could, whoa, that didn't work out. I could put it, uh, you know, underneath here uh, and have it stick up kind of like a normal car antenna. That one is by far the easier option because I could run the cable into the dash. However, uh, it's also kind of dorky looking. I feel like on the back looks more like a, like a military Jeep or some kind of true off-road vehicle. So I think I'm gonna go with that. So I had this right here and I, you never want to uh, mess up your drilling holes in your car. All right, so I marked those four holes, uh, and I'm going to drill them out and uh, go from there. All right, so now the screws are in and uh, seems pretty tight. Let's, uh, ooh, let's close the thing and see if it works. says it did. No, it doesn't. Shit. Okay, well, I'm glad I can provide a what not to do on this. Um, so the screws are too tall, and it means that my hatch doesn't close all the way, and it just beeps at me. So 
I guess I'm gonna pull these screws out and uh, attach this on the front <laughs> on the hood and uh, fill these up with silicone. You know, honestly, it may be a good thing that uh, I had to move this because this is a lot easier to run the cable. I was just thinking I'm gonna run the cable from the back to the front. I might move it still, you know, don't hold me to it, but this will be um, a lot easier. All right, so I'm gonna tighten down these little uh, hex nuts here to, oops, sorry, hit the camera with the antenna. Ah. All right, we obviously don't want these things wobbling around. Also, man, you shouldn't, don't do this when it's 100 degrees outside. This is just stupid. All right, so it um, goes like that. I'm just gonna do it finger tight for right now. I'll come back later and um, tighten it up with the, the wrench. I don't wanna do it if I've <laughs> undo it later. All right, so. It's all right, it's got a little bit of flex in the hood. I mean, this is supposed to flex. And I think that's the idea. The way the screws are attached, the brackets sound, I don't know how much force the highway would put on it. I guess we'll find out. Okay, let's get to the let's get to the cabling. Okay, there's no such thing as a good way to go through to run cables through your firewall. It's always really hard. Um, so I think the best plan of attack here is to go through the kind of come in uh, from behind the glove box. And just as an aside here, I had this conversation on Twitter the other day. I've never stored gloves in my glove box. I, I think that's, I assume someone does. That's where they got the name. But I mean, I have ice scrapers, an umbrella, uh, two air, uh, air pressure gauges, and now some masks, right? Like, I wonder if future generations will refer to these as the mask box or the napkin box. That's normally what's in here. But since we're not driving much during the pandemic, I'm not driving, going through drive throughs which is good for my health, but it's terrible for my napkin stash. Uh, so I got the <laughs> glove box out. As it turns out, you have to remove that silver piece up here and pieces of the door uh, sill over here to get all, to all the screws. And I felt around up in there trying to find a good spot to go through the firewall. I had looked from the engine compartment and couldn't find one. However, it struck me as I sat in the doorway there, there's probably a better way. And in fact, there is. You see here in the engine compartment, there's this little kind of foam cover. I've already popped the, the pins off of. And if you look, you can kind of see back in here, and I'm pretty certain I can run a cable right down inside the fender and have it come out uh, down there. So I'm gonna try that because that's a way easier way to do it that doesn't involve going through the firewall itself. Okay, so I got the wire, the cable ran. Uh, you can see it is coming out. I just stuck it through this side and wiggled it around until I had my other hand on the other side until I felt it and I pulled it through. So I'm gonna route all of this. I'm gonna route all this back up here uh, zip tie it together and maybe zip tie it to some of here to keep it out of the way and then put everything back together and then we'll get to plugging in the actual head unit. All right, so we got that plugged in. We're going to take out cool stickers again. You probably saw those earlier. I had messed with the uh, battery pack. Take that off. So connection super easy. Take this piece, slide it in. Then on the other end, you've got cigarette lighter adapter, which takes a little bit of force to get in there. And then uh, the antenna, and I will just plug that in. And then I think we should be good to go, folks. Let's... test it out. Ooh. Of Weather radio works. Thursday. Yeah. It seems to work. Squelch definitely works. That's 19. To be fair, I'm several miles away from the nearest highway. 
there's a scan button. Channel 21's got a hit. All right, well, that's it for this video. This was the Midland 75822 CB radio. Uh, hope you enjoy, hope it's helpful to you. If it is, check out some of my other videos about Subarus, about outdoor stuff. Uh, we've got some other product reviews, both new and down the road after them being used. Uh, I'm going to do a video soon with like all of my favorite gear, right? Everything for outdoorsing, overland stuff. Um, check it out. Hope that's helpful to you as well. Stay safe out there, wear a mask, and uh, enjoy the pandemic. <laughs>